Hey people! I really like to experiment with different setups to get new ideas and so I decided to show you one of the outcomes which I played on one of the last tours with Ohrenfeind and explain to you in detail how it evolved. The main idea. Compared to the setup I played before, not too much has changed. The most notable things are, of course, that both toms are to my sides and that I switched the feet. I play the bass drum with my left and the hi-hat with my right foot. But all of this has developed naturally and bit by bit. As you probably know, I play open-handed and believe that our conventional way of playing comes with a lot of restrictions and may not be up to date anymore. It mainly derived from the history and evolution of this instrument. So what do I do with this information? I try a lot of different setups and observe how they influence my way of playing. This one is therefore just one of many experiments, but it is one I am pretty satisfied with and learned a lot from. Now let's talk about how this setup developed in particular. I am for the most part right-handed and learned to play on a conventional right-handed drum kit and always played the bass drum with my right foot. A few years ago I started to play open-handed and practiced everything with both hands. This is a very good exercise for your coordination and independence and I thought it was just logically consistent to do this with my feet as well. This is why I played and practiced on a completely symmetrical setup where I could mirror everything with my feet. More on this topic you can find in my short tutorial on open-handed playing. Just click right, right here. But only for a few years now I have been playing open-handed exclusively. And of course there are still some things my left hand cannot do as well as my right. Also, I just like the feeling of my right hand on the hi-hat. But I wanted to stick to the open-handed way of playing and from my years of practicing at the symmetrical setup, I had the ability to invert the feet. So I decided to place the bass drum on my left side and the hi-hat on my right. This was the foundation and everything else developed from that. The snare drum. I positioned the snare in the traditional way in front of me between my legs. The toms. At first I arranged the toms like on a classic left-handed kit. So I just mirrored my previous setup. That was a very interesting experiment and I can only recommend to try this yourself. The most important insight I gained from this is that I wasn't able to play the things I was used to play into here without using doubles, paradiddles or left hand lead single strokes. As a right handed drummer one is used to lead grooves and fills with the right hand and therefore this other way of playing feels uncomfortable. From this I concluded that we, maybe, play the things we are used to just because they are easier and feel more comfortable. We almost always play fills on the toms with single strokes downwards. But when I played the hand combinations I was used to on this left-handed kit, something completely different came out, which I was not used to here. But often these things sounded very good. This way I gained a lot of new ideas. In reverse, that means if I want to play these new ideas on my right-handed kit, I now here have to use complex hand combinations. From this I gained two important realizations. One, our setup has to be geared to what we play in our music or our band and what sounds best. And two, still it is indispensable to deal with the application possibilities of the rudiments on the drum kit, because so many great sounding things stay hidden if we play everything just in the familiar way with single strokes. 
But I didn't stick to this tom setup because I wasn't yet satisfied with the movements I had to make during the fills in our songs. I always found the movement to the ragtom particularly uncomfortable. We have to be aware that the same distance in this direction requires much more effort than in this angle. Here we have to move the whole arm, here we can play from our wrist. So I came up with the idea of placing both toms to my sides. This is possible because our music is very groove oriented and there aren't many complex fills which involve the toms and like I said I can always manage those with doubles and paradiddles, like in this one. At first I wanted to place the floor tom on my left and the rack tom on my right side, just because I wanted to change as much as possible at first, just to try it. But then a different aspect came in. Of course I placed the bass drum in a slight angle to follow the natural position of the foot, but now I wasn't able to place the floor tom as far in front as I wanted to. I like to have both toms as far in front as possible and also symmetrical, so I don't have to twist my upper body and also don't have to pull my elbows back. I want to be able to reach everything from a relaxed and healthy playing position. So I just swap the toms again. The floor tom has more space on this side and the rack tom is just smaller, so its middle is more to the front of the drum set. Now they are exactly symmetrical and from a loose and relaxed position I can strike exactly the middle of both drums. Set arrangement and openness. There is a second reason I am happy about having the rectum to my side and more free space in this area. As drummers we mostly sit at the back of the stage and are not seen very well. Additionally we are often hidden by our instrument. But I don't want to be sealed off from the audience and my bandmates. With this setup I have less barriers between me and the audience. The people can see me better and I feel more connected to everything that's happening on stage and can absorb more of the energy from the audience and that's a great feeling. Everyone is different of course and sometimes it is very important to seal off yourself to concentrate on the groove. But I like this kind of dialogue with the people at a concert and also noticed that I play much tighter with my bandmates when I feel that there are less barricades between us. The crash cymbals. The crash cymbals stayed the way they were before, only mirrored. Of course I could place this one to my right side, but I just want to challenge my left hand a little. Sitting position. At this set I practiced for a few weeks until I developed pain in my back. At first I thought this was just due to the rearrangement of my feet. My left leg had to do much more work and thus the muscles in my upper body had to adjust. But then I realized it is due to my sitting position. I am seated pretty far back so I can play the snare drum from a relaxed position without having to pull my arms back. This is why I also had a bigger distance to the hi-hat and the bass drum and in my knees I had an angle of way over 100 degrees. That means I had kind of an overbalance towards my feet. To compensate for that I would have to lean back, but because I always observe myself in the mirror I corrected myself and straightened up again. Now my back muscles had to carry the overweight of my feet. When I realized that I elevated the snare drum a little bit and placed it more to the front of the kit so it is for a good part over the bass drum. Now I can still play it from a relaxed position, sit closer to the pedals, have an angle of just a little over 90 degrees in my knees and the pain is gone. When I was done adjusting these and other details, I provided all the stands with memory clamps, marked the carpet and so I played at this exact kit every night of the tour and it was great fun. But like I said, this is just one of many experiments and I will probably try something different soon. I hope I was able to show you how much consideration can and should go into the development of such a setup and how it can evolve from a basic concept up to the final setup. 
So why not try something new and crazy yourself? And please feel free to tell me about your experiences. Send me an email or message me on Facebook or just leave a comment right here. I am always happy to hear from you. But always keep in mind that a good setup won't make you a better player. Just like a good pedal and the perfect adjustment won't free you from the necessity to practice. But good instruments and a good setup can be able to unlock your potential. It always depends on what we do with it and how we do it and that we always keep our ears open to what the music really needs. I'm really looking forward to reading your opinion on this topic and I will see you in the next video.